What a wonderful afternoon slash morning. I think it's afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, though, hello and welcome to a first ever edition Drunk Lessons. So I am a wee bit buzzed and I'm going to have to edit this when I'm sober. So hopefully I don't do anything stupid. Um, I am drinking... Um, this, the McKellen's Mac- Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It says 12 years old, but it's really like 18 because it sat on the shelf for that long. So, um, here it goes. <laughs> How's a cork? Wonderful. Drunk history. To be honest, I'm pretty sure that title is trademarked, but... I am going to be giving my drunk lessons about history right now. So, will I probably do more than just history? Yes. But, here it goes. (laughs) So, our story begins in the 1500s. By 1500s, it's like 1533. And King Henry... I think it's 1533. Anyways. King Henry has a wife named Anne Boleyn. Wonderful little lady. She's amazing. Wonderful. She becomes pregnant. And the king's probably like, Oh my god, this is it. This is great. This is amazing. I finally get my son that I've always wanted. Psych, it's a girl. And it's Elizabeth. She comes out all red hair, the devil spawn, should have been thrown in a fire, but she's royalty, so she gets a free pass for a lot of things because she's royalty, and they say classism doesn't exist. So, Queen Elizabeth was born in 1534, 1533, 15... Fuck if I know. Anyways, she's born, she's alive, she gives life to this planet and to England. And when she's three years old, her mother gets her head chopped off for, apparently, incest and adultery. Both of which she denied at her dead bed. At her... Both she denied in her dead bed. Death bed. So anyways, they're there, and King Henry kind of comes up with this new rule of, you know, um... So King Henry's there, he comes up with a stupid new rule called the fucking line of a section, and set up the rules in which they have to, like, actually follow now. Only Protestants, no Catholics, and males first, females if there are no other males. And so that's pretty much how it went. So, and everyone was happy with that and wonderful, until his son, Edward, decided to become in power because King Henry VIII decided to have a premature death because he was fat and obese. I don't know how else. And he also had an infected leg, but, I mean, mostly the fat and obesity is what killed him. And the infected leg. But there was a line of things that led up to it. Mostly obesity. So when Edward, Edward, Edward gets in power. That's when... Oh, God, I just noticed this. American viewers, shit. When Edward got in power, that's when things changed because he didn't give a shit and he made Jane Seymour the successor and both of his sisters suck and they were declared illegitimate. Anyways, that didn't last long. Edward died because, you know, he was a child and he was sick. And Plus, there's also a chance he may have been murdered, so... So, Edward died. Jane became the Queen of England for a total of, like, five days before Queen Princess Mary came riding in with Princess Elizabeth in London in the 1500s or something. And they rode in on a horse into London. The crowd let them go in. And well, uh, what do you know? Mary is crowned. Queen of England, and she marries Philip of Spain, quite literally tosses herself into Spain's bedchambers. And England wasn't too happy with that, but at least they had an ally, and whoop, oh, no, Mary's Catholic. 
So Mary went on this weird little revenge thing because she hated everyone and everything. And she went on to murder all the Protestants in the land, which wasn't that good. Anyways, so you know who else was a Protestant? Her lovely little sister who helped get her into, you know, queendom. So she had her sister put on trial. Like some normal person does, they put their sister on trial because they have a different belief system than you do. Do you know what I would want to do? Have my brother put on trial for treason because we believe in something different. We don't. We kind of have some different political beliefs, but still, though, it's ridiculous. And so, Mary ended up trying to put her sister through some hard facts and some ringer in a court in her own bedchambers. And she asked herself, well, she asked her sister, Elizabeth, have you betrayed me? Oh my god, no, Mary, that's like so uncool and I don't do uncool things so no I I didn't do any of the things that they're telling you I went to church a catholic church not a protestant one don't look at my red hair So it was a big contest on whether or not she did or did not have treasonous plots against her sister through Protestant means throughout the Kingdom of England. Nevertheless, her sister will remain suspicious until her deathbed and so put Queen Elizabeth, then I think like 20 or something, into house arrest for the next five years, where she couldn't really leave her house, do much, do anything, really, you know, live a life. I mean, not like you really could live a life back then. Could you imagine living life back then in the 1500s? God. (laughs) Yeah, that sucks. So, Elizabeth remained in her little house chambers, all sitting all there. She ended up getting visited by some little Lord Robert Dudley. And thus began the love exchange between them while he was married. So, therefore, technically, they were both adulterers. But again, you know, it's royalty. So the red-headed royal adulteress can go do whatever the hell she wants, and, well, fucking any other normal woman gets stoned and hung in the street. Privilege. So, <clears throat> Mary dies. Her sister, Elizabeth, becomes queen, right? Everyone loves Elizabeth. Not really. Half the country hates her and wants her dead. So, what do you do when you want half the country that hates you and wants to die? You get rid of those specific people that help those people in your own parliament and prevent them from getting power, which is basically kind of what she did. Um, Except she went about it in a weird, like, weird way. And technically legal. She did have a vote. It was rigged. Did have a vote. So she had a vote, and where she ended up discussing the political body, some of the very first things that you would ever see in normal day capitalism or any other like normal day political shenanigans uh she was talking about the political body of the basically left versus right bs the traditional versus the conservatives yeah and um that also changed the landscape of political like how politics is even done in england right people were just like this woman she's like damn near prophetic whoa But there's a teeny little tiny detail that kind of prevented her from, you know, achieving... Well, not really achieving much. It kind of haunted her the entire time. People were like, uh, you know, woman, you need to do this. And it was have a child in order to secure the heir. Because what kind of woman in the 15th century doesn't have a child? What is this? So she didn't have a child. She didn't have anything. And she was just like... No, I'm keeping everything to myself. If I marry a man, they're just going to straight up take all my power and all my crown. And I want to rule this country with an iron fist. So, um, no, I ain't marrying just for you men to be satisfied with me. Thank you. I'm owning this court. And she owned the court. While she was there sashaying and slaying the court, she was there creating new ways for, I was going to say Canada, for England to create money. While also under that 
her era, she ended up stamping plenty of approval for the East Indian Trading Company and for many more voyages to the New World, starting with the Virginia. Virginia is named Virginia after the Virgin Queen. I don't know why I pointed over here as if something over here is going to pop up. Maybe. I don't know. And I'm still going to keep pointing over here. So, Virginia was founded after the Virgin Queen, hence why it's still called Virginia after the Virgin Queen. If I say that one more time, I swear. So, amongst all of that, there was a bunch of new inventions being brought in. They founded potatoes, and when she first had her bite, and they thought it was the leaves and not the roots, and they all threw up and had a bad time at dinner. Not really that good. But, you know, they also had the pocket watch, or sorry, the wrist watch that came into fashion under Queen Elizabeth as well. Um, and what else? Just a huge golden age of economic recovery, because England was economically broke. Think about it. Its rival was literally the Spanish Empire, who had an empire across the New World, collecting gold, and the French, who were just, you know, ribbiting about. So then, Spain got really, really upset because, A, not only was it a woman in charge of England, which was a no-go. And keep in mind, the same king, who's the king of the Spanish Empire right now, also was married to Queen Mary. So, quite literally, he had England under his power, and then all of a sudden it fell away, and then became this Protestant, red-headed woman who has sex with anyone and doesn't give a shit, and has piracy to anyone and does not give a shit, and Spain very much did give a shit. So give a shit they did, and they sent an armada of 300-some-odd ships to England, and England managed to suppress them with three thirty, About 30 ships. Lots of pirates. And a big storm came blowing in through that way, so... Good for them, really. But see, Queen Elizabeth had big balls, and she thought that, like, she can go after Spain. And so she sent another armada after that failed armada, which did not really end up turning well. But it did end up leaving that England was its own country, and therefore going to be its own thing. So, I mean, eventually it would become its own empire, enslave, you know, a quarter of the human population, and then, you know, have 75% of the land totally under its belt. England. Yeah. Hence why I speak English. Well, that and my family are literally from England, so. And German. And a little bit of indigenous. But that is besides the point. <laughs> so, Queen Elizabeth had all of this set up, and she loved everything that she did, had her beautiful little kingdom leading up to it, and then she was getting very, very sick, most likely from the mercury that she was putting on her face, the loads of mercury on her face to look beautiful. Why? Why women? What? Why? And my bigger question is, why men? You're literally forcing women to kill themselves so that way that they can look beautiful for who? You? It's said that some women put so much mercury on their face so that way they can look beautiful to the men, so that way they can acquire power. But most of them died at a very young age before the age of 30 because they were poisoning themselves. Different story, different topic. I don't get it. Anyway, so Queen Elizabeth ended up having to come down a serious doubt of melancholy, aka depression. I don't know why I was, I was uh, the aka it was going to be aka depression. Sorry, don't think that I was air quoting depression. That's not literally. It's the same. Two different eras. Anyways, so she had a severe bout of depression. All her friends were dying off. She was poisoned from mercury, and then she eventually slipped into a sickness, and then eventually she died off. But then people were like, oh, no. She had no kid. What do we do? Ring, 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 ring. Hi, this is Scotland. Yes. Um, our queen just died, and we need to borrow your king. But didn't you just kill our queen, and now you just want to borrow our king? Okay. And so King James became the king of Scotland and England, thus setting precedence for eventually the United Kingdom. Can you breathe more loudly? Setting precedence for the United Kingdom to take place in Britain under Queen Anne about a century later. So that's it. That's my drunk lesson for today. Is there's a moral to the story, just uh if you don't want the Scottish taking care of your king. Dumb to have children. There's no other moral to the story. Like and subscribe.